This is the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. We're gonna collide them today, along with a bunch of other things that you guys suggested. And our first suggestion comes from Freezer, who asked if we could collide the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. All right, so I pulled up the simulation here. So this is the Milky Way on the bottom and the Andromeda galaxies on top. So the Milky Way actually is smaller. I'm just gonna play and see what happens. I'm actually interested like what's gonna get ripped where so you can see these are the central black holes in the middle super massive black holes oh black holes are colliding <gasps> they just sucked into one okay so there's now only one black hole that's probably a lot more massive and you can see all of the matter from the galaxies getting shot out let's speed up time a little bit it looks like a lot of stuff is gonna get launched into interstellar space and this is gonna form a new galaxy called Milk Dromeda. So the Milky Way and Andromeda are actually going to collide in real life in like a lot of a lot of time. Yeah, and then they'll create Milk Dromeda, which I guess this is this is the Milk Dromeda galaxy now. It's very chaotic, but I'm sure it would settle down over time. Now we're back in our solar system and Uranus says, "Can you make two suns collide with each other?" Let's just add another sun to the system and put it on still so they don't orbit each other. It just they're just going to run into each other. Just like that. And we'll slow down time because this is going to be pretty quick. And we're going to see them collide with each other. Oh, here it comes. Boom. Okay, so neither of them survive, actually. And it just goes supernova. And that supernova is going to engulf the entire solar system, it looks like. Yeah, shooting out beyond Neptune and everything. Everything in the solar system is part of the supernova now. And it burned all of the planets up to Jupiter. So everything else is burned to death. But Jupiter is still here. It's losing mass slowly. So it basically kills the solar system if they collide. Dud says, make the biggest possible gas giant and see how it affects the sun. So we're going to add a gas giant in here. We'll put it pretty far out. Um, we'll put it between Neptune and Uranus. So like right here. So we're just gonna start with this random gas giant. Pretty dark out here, let's use our flashlight. We need this to be pretty before we make it ginormous. Let's do a green gas giant. I wish we had a green gas giant for real in our system, that'd be so cool. Beautiful, it looks like it's bright. <laughs> okay, so right now it is only 3.4 Earth's size. So it's like 1% the size of Jupiter. So we're gonna start and we're just gonna make it the size of Jupiter. And then we're going to see if that affects the solar system at all, just from that. So let's speed up time. Is it gonna pull Uranus out of its orbit? It looks like a little bit, but nothing too crazy. So let's like make it 10 times bigger. So now it's 10 times Jupiter's size. See if anything happens now. Doesn't look like too much. Uranus is coming. Is it going to get gravity? Oh, oh, look right here. Uranus is getting pulled out of its orbit by Sprite. Oh, oh, are they going to collide? Okay. Okay, they're getting close. I wonder if they're going to collide. Oh, no, it doesn't look like they are, but they are getting pretty close. Oh, that was close. Okay, so it looks like it's almost captured Uranus in an orbit. Did we eject Uranus from the solar system? No, it's still in orbit. So it messed up Uranus's orbit. So we're gonna, let's make it even bigger now. We'll go a hundred times Jupiter. Oh, it turned into a star. We can't do that. Smaller, smaller. Okay, this is like the biggest you can get it before it turns into a star. So now let's play and see what happens. So it is like burning hot because it's like trying to become a star. It's a brown dwarf technically. Its orbit is pretty elliptical. It looks like it's messing up Neptune's orbit too. I think we need it closer. So let's grab it and move it closer. Okay, so now I moved it closer. So now let's see what's gonna happen. Looks like it's pulling a lot of asteroids. Here comes Jupiter. Let's see what happens here. Jupiter gets gravity launched by it. So yeah, st bad stuff's happening. You can see that the sun is actually moving, getting pulled by it. Let's move it even closer, like next to Earth. And now let's see what happens. See if Earth gets eaten up. Here comes Venus. Oh, Venus got eaten. Here comes Earth. Oh, Earth's dead too. So this would be bad if this happened. Okay, let's see. Mercury's still alive. Mars got brought all the way up here and it looks like it's still in orbit. Oh, did it just get launched out of the solar system? Oh, whoa, if you turn on the orbit lines, you can see how much it's really affecting the entire system. That's crazy. So that's what would happen, I guess. Jacob Cassidy says, I'd like to see you try creating another moon for Earth using a bunch of different asteroids and meteors. Okay. So if we're going to try to create another moon for Earth, so here's its moon, our moon, the moon. 
And if we want to create another one, uh, we could try launching meteors into Earth to break off certain chunks to create it. So let's try that. Random asteroid launch um, into Earth. Uh, let's make it like spin really fast so it can kind of like shoot stuff off of it. Okay, I want to see this thing spinning in real time. Is it spinning fast enough to like get ripped apart? Oh, it is. Oh, we spun it to death. Uh oh. Oh, the clouds. <laughs> I think we're going to need something bigger. Pluto. Go. Go Pluto. We need Pluto to spin, definitely. Okay, that's got to that's got to be good, right? Oh, it broke right before it smashed into the earth. Okay, the fragments. One of these has got to remain in orbit, right? We need like a, a big chunk to come off. Okay, Pluto, but go faster. 10 100 times what it thought it what it was going. Okay, real time. Okay, this is in real time, so it's going, it's going. We need a big chunk to come off to create a moon. Right on the edge. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, look at all these rocks. These are going to be good. We want these to, like, condense together. Okay, that was good. That was a good collision. Good job, Earth. Um, it's... Oh, whoa, the entire Earth is fragmenting out. Oh, boy. We need something to stay in orbit. Why is the whole Earth disintegrating? Okay, come on. Ah, I see one. Oh, that's just the moon. The moon's orbit got messed up by that. Wait, is the moon going to crash into Earth now? Because if it does, that would be cool. Oh, it totally is. Oh! <gasps> We, are, we made the moon crash into Earth accidentally. Slow down. Slow down time. Let's see what happens here. Oh, it just like barely hit it. It's going to come back around and hit it again, though. The rush limit's breaking it apart. We want a little. I just want it to collide. Moon. Boom. OK, that's got to make a moon, right? No, this is impossible. Boom. Has a moon now. Jay says, make every planet orbit the sun's habitable zone and wait a while. Okay, so what we're going to do is turn on the habitable zone. And then let's just, like, grab each planet. Let's pause it. And then move them. So it does kind of, like, mess it up. So I'm just going to, like, bring them out to Earth's orbit. Um, and then we can auto-orbit. Go to motion and click auto-orbit. And that'll make it perfectly circular. So now for Mars, we'll bring that into Earth's orbit. Put about here. Okay, boom, Neptune's done. So, they should all be in orbit now. Every single planet is now within Earth's orbit in the habitable zone or hotter of the system. So let's slow down time to like, I don't know, half a day per second. And let's see what happens to the system, the solar system. If it just works, that would be crazy. Okay, it looks like it's okay so far. Are they just gonna work? No way. Okay, okay, something's happening. The orbits are kind of shifting. Oh, did we lose planets? Oh, Uranus is out here. How'd that happen? Okay, I guess some planets got ejected, but it lasted years. We're at 2,206. If this happened, we would be fine if it happened exactly like that. That's crazy. I did not think it would be stable at all. No idea if this is possible, but fill just Mars's Valles Marineris with water via a water meteor. Okay, so Valles Marineris is the biggest canyon in the solar system and it's on Mars. So here it is, you can see it. Let's try to fill it with water. Launch right here. And then just fill this with water, right? Just straight water in the meteor. Okay, it's a big thing of water, but let's go. Okay, here it comes. Oh, the Mar Mars is turning. Ah, okay, here comes the water. Oh, look, it's like filling it. Okay, speed up time and see what happens here. It is, look, we just filled it. This is it right here. I mean, we also filled up this. Oh, the water is like disappearing. Oh, and now it's frozen and the whole thing freezes with ice. I mean, one side of it, but we did fill it. Suggestion, make a gas giant so close to a star and make it evaporate. Okay, so let's move Jupiter so close to the sun that it starts to have issues. How close does it need to be? Let's put it right here and see what happens. Um, and let's make it orbit so it doesn't just fly straight into the sun. Here's Jupiter, now super close to the sun. Let's see what happens. Okay, it is heating up. Let's speed up time and see if anything's gonna happen. Okay, it's starting to turn orange. It's pretty stable in temperature now and it's not losing any mass, so we need it even closer. Move it even closer. Okay, probably about, let's try here. That's gotta melt it off, right? Jupiter versus the sun. Okay, it's over a thousand degrees Celsius now. Still heating up. 
and it's stabilized at like 1600 and it's not losing any mass. Oh my gosh, we need it even closer. That's got to do something, right? It's got to evaporate here. Okay, we're going to watch its mass right here. We want this to start going down. What? What did you do to the... Oh, it crashed into the sun. It like broke the sun. It was stealing mass from the sun. That's crazy. Where did the mass go? Whoa, that was cool. It even left like a big ripple on the sun. Earth says make the sun be in a binary system. Okay, so let's just add another sun to the sun. Uh, like that. Uh, will it work? Okay. <laughs> Mercury gets pulled in. Venus gets pulled in. Okay, uh, it's pretty chaotic. Okay, Mercury just got ejected from the entire solar system. All of the planets are getting pulled in. I think it's because there's way more mass. So everything starts getting pulled twice as hard as it did before. So I have an idea. What if we, what if we make the sun half of the mass that it is now? Uh, it's paused right now. And then we do a binary orbit with another sun that's only half the mass. Okay, so now these are two half suns orbiting each other instead of one big sun. Okay, so the orbit seems to be safe. Let's add a bear center. Let's see what happens. Oh, is it gonna work? Oh my gosh, I think it's working. I think the orbits might have been changed a little bit, but yeah, the solar system is still completely fine. So if the sun suddenly split in two and they started orbiting each other, we would still be fine. Let's make sure Earth is fine because, oh, is it starting to freeze? <gasps> Earth is freezing. I guess they don't shoot out as much. Like the mass is half, but they're not as bright. Yeah, they're only, each one is only 4% of the sun. So Earth wouldn't leave the system, but it would freeze. Leave your suggestions for more things to do in Universe Sandbox down in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.